Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're talking about an incredibly interesting game engine, one with quite a bit of pedigree behind it, and it's called The Machinery by the company Our Machinery, which I guess makes a strange sort of sense. Now, this one may actually sound familiar to you if you're a regular to this channel, because it's actually something I covered back in April. Um, I did a hands-on with it back then. I'm not going to go into the same level of detail today, but if you're interested in checking that out, uh, that video is available here, kind of goes hands-on, shows you a little bit of what this game engine is all about. But the reason why we were talking about it today is because it just went into open beta, which is pretty cool. So what happened is back early in the year, it was a private invite only affair. A couple thousand developers were involved in it, as you're going to see here. So 2000 plus developers were part of the closed beta. Uh, that's the one I showcased back then. But now we're actually going into open beta, which means just anyone can sign up and get it. Actually, what I found is my closed beta account didn't work anymore. So I had to re-sign up anyways, regardless to what they're saying here. Uh, so if you're wondering what the machinery is all about, it is a new lightweight and flexible game engine designed to give you all the power of a modern engine in a minimalistic package that is easily understood, extended, explore, rewrite, and hack. Beyond Games API can also be used for simulations and visualizations, as well as building custom tools, editors, and applications. Now, I know you're sitting there going, oh, God, not another game engine, but there's actually some really good reasons for this one to exist. Um, and here are a few of them. The, the uh, API is written in C. Yes, C. No plus plus is there. Straight out C. Easy to understand and learn without the complexity of modern C++. Plus, don't worry, you still have type safe vectors, hash tables, just as in C++. They use a modular design, completely plug-in based, makes it easy to extend and replace parts of the engine. Uh, it's also pay for what you use. So if you don't need physics, don't ship the physics DLL. Don't want animation, don't need sound, don't ship those things. It allows you to make your game as lightweight as you want it to be. Uh, individual DLLs can be hot loaded also while the editor is running, which is pretty cool. So if you're making tweaks to a DLL that builds your game, you can actually you know, just swap it out without having to restart. Uh, Codebase is small, uh, readable, and well-documented, and offer licenses with full source code for small and large developers coming soon. Now, there is one of the downsides. We don't actually know the licensing details on this engine, and this isn't something you're going to want to use today anyways. This is more of a prospecting towards the future kind of approach. So just do be aware that a lot of the details aren't available to us. I also believe it is Windows only, at this point in time. A few of the other features we currently have at this stage of beta, it's got asset importers, including GLTF, FBX, and other 3D file formats, as are supported by AssImp. Uh, creation graphs, so you can create materials, visual effects, textures, buffers, and more using a visual graph approach. Uh, rendering, data-driven, powerful rendering architecture built on top of Vulkan. Uh, physics is NVIDIA physics-based. Animation uses hierarchical state machines for layered animations. Audio has a, a software-based 3D audio mixer. There's all about data-oriented entity components system. Now this data oriented thing, these guys are the pioneers of data orientation. We'll see in a sec what their previous things were, but you'll understand. There's also a visual scripting alternative to C programming. It uh, uses, I think, the same graph base as their creation graph. Uh, immediate mode UI toolkit, so you can build your own tools, etc. You get all the widgets and GUIs and such you need there. Collaborative editing, so multiple people can work on the same project in real time and uh, profiling of statistics are built in, and there's a number of things they're looking at towards the future. Uh, so this is very much an underdevelopment engine. It's one of those things to definitely be aware of. Uh, you are going to be using C behind the scenes. It, it, it does have a certain simplicity about it, which is definitely nice. If you head on over to their page, you can learn a little bit more. It kind of covers the same ground that we just saw, but where this kind of is um, interesting is our machinery. These guys, previous works included... Um, Stingray and BitSquid. Now, BitSquid was bought by Autodesk and rebranded as Stingray, uh, and also the diesel engines. These guys are actually pretty battle tested. They were used to make the Magicka series of games and the uh, Warhammer four player team based uh, action games. I want to say Vermin. Yeah, Vermintide. Vermintide 1 and 2. Uh, those were made using the Stingray engine. Stingray was a very unique game engine in that it was, again, lightweight, data oriented, ECS based. So, this is definitely a spiritual successor to. Uh, uh, that project. So if you want to learn a little bit more about our machinery, I did do a video in the past, but of course, I am going to showcase some of it to you right now. So you go ahead, download the beta. Uh, basically, it's just a zip file. You extract it out, go into bin, and then the machinery is where it's at. Now, you also can find some of the source code for some of the plugins, c based plugins, so you can see how it works in that regard. Uh, this is the editing environment. Interestingly enough, it is available in a couple of languages, including English, uh, Swedish, and gibberish. 
I don't know why you'd want to do it in gibberish, but hey, you can. So let me go back to English. Uh, remember where that is. It is a little bit confusing. You also have theming here in terms of uh, your approach. So if you prefer, and I got to warn you right up front, this is an eye steering retina experience, but there is a light mode available as well. All right, so let's switch back to dark mode before my, my eyes burn out. Okay, so here is your editing environment. Everything here, every little widget or window here is essentially a plugin. So you can bring in, um, you create your own tool set that kind of plugs into this overarching system. This isn't really an engine that, um, you know, showcases that well, because a lot of the coolness is lightweight and plumbing. However, if you did just grab the beta and you want to figure out, okay, what the heck do I do with this thing? What you're going to want to do is come on in here to view, uh, right here, and then go to the download tab. And then you're gonna find there's a bunch of samples available here. I've downloaded a number of them already, or you can just download all of them at once right here. Uh, you also can get different versions of the machinery here. I'm already running it, so no needs to grab the newest one, but you can use the download tab for keeping up to date. Uh, once you've grabbed one of those guys, basically they're just zip files, bring them down, seven zip, extract them out somewhere, and then open them up. So here I'll showcase the third person demo. Uh, none of this is really that flashy for the most part, but you can see how a project works. Uh, standard WASD keys to control your environment. Here we can see a player entity in the world. So you see here over here is your, your entity tree or your scene graph. So we got the player here and you're gonna notice the player is built out of uh, various different components. Now these are grayed out because they are, um, they're inherited at this point. But the cool thing you'll see here, so I come down here to the asset browser, everything is pretty much entities. So our entire scene here, it's just an entity. So let's go into the player for a second. So here is the player. It is built up of a couple different things. It has an asset, which you can see here, has a skeletal rigging involved and a 3D model attached. Uh, there is also a player entity. We can open that one up. And here is, you can think of this kind of like um, prefabs in other engines to a certain degree. So we can edit our player out here. You see it is completely component based. So it's got a link component, which is kind of like I don't know why link and transform are separate things. It's kind of confusing to me, to be honest, but there's probably logic behind it. Uh, entity rigor component, which is uh, something, again, all of these components, you can go ahead and create these yourself in C if you wish to so forth extend things. And then we go back. Uh, so yeah, all these various different pieces go together and player mover component. Uh, and all of the details are there, plus children are available to it. So you've got a camera child to this guy, etc. And then finally, we have these ASM files. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And you can see this is the, uh, I think ASM is uh, animation state machine, I believe. And here you're seeing uh, animation controllers. We're switching between uh, backwards, forward, idle, the conditions to switch between them, death. So this is your state machine controls. And these are being triggered by, uh, you know, WASD keys and so on. So this is how you set up and define your animation. You can blend the speeds out here. Uh, you can preview them. I thought you could pre preview them down here, but I may be wrong. Okay, how do I set play? Anyways, I've, I've accidentally in, I'm creating something now. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna shut that guy down. So this is kind of how things are composed. And then we go here, you got the various different animations that go together for this guy. So here you can see, walk backwards. I don't know why it's not showing. There we go. So here is uh, a, a backwards walk dot clip animation, one of the various different animations that's attached to this guy. Now, once you've actually got your scene at a point where you wanna go ahead and check it out, just go ahead and hit play right here. And you can now uh, hit focus, WASD keys and walk around. So again, not the uh, most uh, beautiful. So you got a particle system that kicked in over there. Not the most beautiful demo that you've ever seen in your life, but it, it does showcase some of the functionality. Of course, we got this environment uh, skybox map around affecting our uh, environment. Uh, again, the, the renderer behind the scenes is Vulcan. Uh, but yeah, this guy, so the real selling strength of uh, the um, the machinery it is the extensibility, the simplicity, the, the modular nature, and so on. So that is where this guy is really set apart to be different than other ones. Now we can also come back here. So let's go in here and take a look at uh, the creation graph system. And I can go, let's say, here we go. So here's a default creation graph for rendering meshes in a DCC asset. And you see you've got nodes that come in, they hook together, there's the draw call that comes out. Anything that we can uh, pull out of it will automatically drop down, you know, dynamically, whatever is correct. Or I can right click and we can add new nodes in. You can also create new nodes, I believe, using C simply yourself and add on top of things. Uh, if we go back here, a lot of this is about the extensibility. So we come down here and we take a look at, um, I think samples has some examples. So you can see some plugins here. Here is an example of Pong being implemented. I, I think Pong is still in here. So where, we, where do we find Pong? Uh, when, no, it must be a view. Pong. All right, so here you can see Pong. 
is inside. It's, it's, like I said, any one of these editor windows or tabs is ultimately being, uh, it's just a little module that was written. So here you can see an example of Pong. And again, it's as simple as it gets. It's literally an H file, a C file. And you can take a look at one of these guys. And this is what the code would look like to create uh, that little Pong window that just popped up within our editor. So obviously, if you're going to create new tools or whatever, this is kind of the approach that you want to take. And you can see it, it's pretty simple. So you got a series of callbacks, things like on tab create. We got things for filling the tabs title, uh, the menu for creating the, the menu for that tab, uh, destroying it. Uh, yeah. And then here we got details for loading the plugins themselves. So it's a very modular and straightforward and simple approach. And that is really the strength of uh, our machinery. The whole idea here is this is giving you kind of a framework and a very lightweight um, glue for building all these lightweight and modular tools. And again, if you don't need something, you just don't include it in your final binary. Uh, so there are a whole lot of details that aren't there yet. Uh, all the targets you're going to be able to platform, uh, all the platforms you're going to be able to target, uh, the cost, all that's very important things are not yet available yet but if what you saw here and the idea of a lightweight component based system appeals to you this definitely could be one worth checking out again everything is ultimately entity based including our whole level here and then if we go into again an entity in the world so here is the player entity you see here built out of a bunch of components and then you can easily add new components to the engine and these are things that you can also write yourself in code and so you can add new um, functionality to entities that exist in your game world in the form of components, pretty simply. So that is the entire idea behind the machinery. In some ways, you can think of it as scaffolding to make your own lightweight game inside of this engine. It's an interesting project and it is pretty one of a kind. And again, the developers, uh, our machinery guys, these guys have uh, the pedigree, the history. They have worked on some really successful shipping stuff, including a game engine that they sold to Autodesk that Autodesk killed, but hey, that's not on them. Uh, so definitely the team behind this has the chops to make this work. Uh, it's just a very different approach to the world. And I'd be interested to hear what you guys think of it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the machinery. But if you're interested in checking it out, just head on over to their website. Uh, it is available at uh, ourmachinery.com. Just go to download beta. You got to fill out a form telling them, uh, you know, who you are. I don't. I logged in. But once you've logged in, they send you a confirmation email. You you authenticate it and done. And then you can go ahead and download it. And then once again, remember, once you've got it downloaded, you're going to probably want some projects to play with. Grab those via the download manager. And that's it. Let me know what you think of our machinery. It's, uh, sorry, the machinery. It's, it's a very unique engine and it's taking a very different design approach than a lot of other things out there. So when you're saying, oh God, yet another engine, why? Well, that's the answer. So let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.